Hey there, you've probably clicked on this video because you're looking to improve your times up to sub 5 on SKU without learning Sarah's Advanced. Um, if you're not, then what are you doing here? Anyways, in this guide, we'll explore alternative techniques and strategies that will help you break the sub 5 barrier and improve your solving abilities. I will attempt to provide you with useful insights and tips to elevate your SKU solving game. Quick disclaimer. I don't recommend putting off learning advanced unless your ultimate goal in SCUBE is sub 5. It takes an hour or so, and it greatly benefits your times. The best tutorial out there is Dominic's, shown here, which I will link in the description. Chapter 1. Focusing on the basics. To start off, it's important that you have a solid foundation in the basic solving techniques. Make sure you have a good grasp of Sarah's intermediate and use the optimal algorithms, which are shown on screen now. You also want to familiarize your muscle memory with your algorithms and should be able to execute all of your OLLs and PLLs in under 2 seconds with a stack mat. Also, you want to make sure that you know an optimal algorithm for Zperm and Hperm. In the case that you don't know them, I will show them on screen right now. Chapter 2. Efficiency and Look Ahead One key aspect to achieving sub-5 times is efficiency in your solving. Work on minimizing rotations and trying to improve your first layer. If you are consistently making your layers in 7 or more moves, or not fully planning one out in inspection, then I would recommend just kind of doing 3 or 4 random moves on this cube and trying to find the optimal solution on all 6 faces. Once you get good at this, you can move on to 5 or 6 move layers. In addition to being efficient, practicing your look ahead to anticipate the next steps in your solve is crucial. It allows for more seamless transitions between steps. What helped me the most with this was learning some patterns for predicting PLL from my last layer case and then looking at my OLL pieces while I was solving first layer rather than the pieces that I was currently solving. Developing these skills will greatly contribute to reducing your solving times. Chapter 3. Maximizing your TPS In order to achieve faster solving times, it is crucial to focus on increasing your TPS, or turns per second. This is probably the most important thing to work on in order to break the sub-5 barrier. For me, getting sub-5 was all about improving my TPS as I use the beginner's method to get around 4.5 global. In order to hire your TPS, I would recommend doing the style of practice that Lee K. Lee does, where she scrambles the cube and tries to get the best time possible on the scramble by repeating it and executing the solve until she perfects the case. I also recommend drilling your OLLs and PLLs repeatedly, focusing on executing them as smoothly as possible over actual turn speed the faster you get, the harder your habits are to break, so it's crucial to eliminate bad finger tricks from your solves early on. Chapter 4. Utilizing Other Scubers According to the WCA database, there are 718 people who have a sub 4 second average and 162 that have a sub 3 second average. These experienced scubers can be a valuable resource for learning and improving your own solving techniques. You may see them at competitions you go to or talk to them online. The Scubers Discord server, for instance, currently has around 800 members and includes many top ranking Scube solvers. You can utilize the fact that these experienced Scubers have already mastered the skills and techniques necessary for fast Scube solving and can provide valuable insights and advice to you. Chapter 5 Practice, Practice, Practice. I know that many of you are just going to click away here, but practice is truly the key to improving at any skill, including skew solving. If you're struggling to improve your TPS, sure drills can help, but just doing solves will help more. If you're having a hard time transitioning from first layer to OLL, doing solves will help you with that. 
Practicing regularly really does a number for your consistency and overall performance and gets you used to recognizing patterns and developing efficient solving strategies. Remember, you need to keep pushing your limits in order to succeed. Never underestimate the power of perseverance in reaching your goals. And remember that in the end, cubing is just about having fun. I wish you good luck on your scoop solving journey and hope that you enjoy the process of continuous improvement in the event. Cheers.